Joberhausen. Today marks the first of hopefully many painting tutorials. To start off with, I'll show you how to paint this. This is a Games Workshop Space Marine model that I converted to be used in my Renegade Lamenters army, which will be using the Blood Angels Codex. The model will be used as an assault marine without a jump pack, and as you can see, he has a melter gun. Okay. Now, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> This is what the colour scheme looks like, and is also what I will try to replicate on the Melter Gunner dude. I went for a dirty, rusty look, as to help the chaotic feel of the model. Rightio, let's get started! For the first step, I undercoated the model using this, the Army Painter Colour Primer Spray Paint. As you can see, this one is desert yellow. Now I'll quickly show you my wet palette. A wet palette is used to keep the paint from drying out whilst it is in use. It is made up of a plate, some greaseproof paper, and a piece of sponge. And oh, obviously water. <laughs> Regarding paints, I happen to be one of the unlucky ones who got the Citadel Mega Paint Set just before the new paints came out. So if you are using the new range, or any other range, you'll have to decide what paints match. Ok, to start with, I'll be painting with this, my Wargamer Detail Brush from the Army Painter. And the first colour I will use is the Citadel Foundation Paint, Eandon Dark Sun. I will go ahead and give the whole model a wash with this colour. If you do not know what a wash is, it is basically a technique where you significantly water down the paint on the brush to give a smoother coat. Now I've done this, I will move on to the secondary base colour, which will be Mechrite Red, also a Citadel foundation paint. With this, I will do a couple of the armour pieces, like the right shoulder pad here. I always like to keep my paint at least a little watered down, to improve the flow of the paint, but of course it's entirely up to you how you do it. Next, I will paint the left knee pad. I'm not too bothered about accuracy at the moment, as I can always tidy these parts up later on. I'll also paint the melter gun's casing in red, so it will stand out more. I think that red can be quite a threatening colour, and what could look more threatening than an angry space marine pointing a melter gun at your face? <laughs> ok, I've finished the red and tidied it up a bit. The third base colour will be a metallic paint, and it will be this one, Tin Bits. Hmm, uh, yes, I think I'll paint the business end of the melter gun first. Do like the look of this paint. Now I'll paint the axe head bayonet. I may have to do a second coat of this off camera, as the GW metallics are notorious for not covering very well. And then, I'll do the melter gun's piping. It's a bit tricky to get around his tentacle here, but it doesn't matter too much as I'll paint that in a different colour later. And then we have on his back is obviously his backpack, <laughs> with which I'll do his two vents here, starting with the right one, then the left one. Next, I'll paint the eight-pointed Chaos Star symbol in the middle of his backpack, trying not to overstep too much. Hmm. And then at the top, we have a small skull to be painted. And then, moving back round to the front, we have another little skull down here on his belt. There. And then there's the wings of what used to be the Aquila on his chest plate, although you can't see much of it now that a tentacle has smashed its way out. <laughs> then we have the grill of his helmet, painting in the lines. There are also these two small circles on his left shoulder pad. Quick little dots. And not to forget his victim's eyepiece here. As you can see, I painted the eye lens red when I was tidying up off camera. 
He's clearly one of the few marines in the company that didn't turn to chaos. Well, it didn't work out too well for him. <laughs> and there we have the metallic parts done. I'll now move on to painting the tentacles in the appropriately named Rotting Flesh. I'll start with the shorter one here that is coming out of his chest plate and is holding up the melter gun. Then we have the big one that is crushing his brother marine's decapitated head. He's not the most friendly marine you'll meet. Hmm. Then the underside as well, making sure not to overstep onto the head that I painted before. And I'll quickly use a dab of Chaos Black. This is just to paint the rope that goes around his right thigh down here. Next I'll be painting the eyes, starting with a base coat of dark flesh. I've moved a bit closer to the camera so you can see what I'm doing here. I'm delicately painting in his left eye lens. And now I'm going to do the right one. It helps if you have steady hands, <laughs> which unfortunately I do not have. There's the base coat down for the eyes, and to really make them pop, I'll give them a wash with blazing orange. Quickly paint them in. Left one first, and then the right one. Doesn't make a difference which order you do them in. <laughs> and for the last step with the eyes, I'll give them both a small blob of skull white. Again, being very careful, this time we just want a tiny little dot, as to show that these are lenses. There. And as lenses are usually made of glass, this therefore shows the light being reflected back off of them. There we go. Oh. Uh, yeah, I may have to correct this one off camera. Okay, eyes done, I will now go ahead and paint the model's base using Adeptus Battle Grey, and for this I will use my old Citadel large brush, as you can see here. Now, I've watered the paint down more than I usually do to help the flow more, but it's not as much as I would do for a wash, so it's sort of in between in consistency. I generally don't measure my paint, I just go with what looks right. Okay, I'm going back to using my Wargamer detail brush, and I will go and paint the victim's face using Elf Flesh. Relatively simple step, as always trying not to overstep onto the places that I've already painted. Get it in there. Then I'll go and do his hair in bleached bone. I don't know exactly why, but all the Blood Angels and successor chapters seem to have blonde hair, including this dead one. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot the helmet down here on the base. I'll paint in the eyes in Chaos Black, as the lenses would be turned off, or most probably broken in this unfortunate guy's case. That's the left one, now the right one. There we go. And of course, his mouthpiece needs to be in tin bits, so I'll paint that in quickly. Like that. Next, we move to another wash. This is my special wash that I mixed. Don't know why I stuck a flying base to the bottom of it. <laughs> Anywho, it's roughly a one-to-one -one mix of Griffone Sepia and Thraka Green. And for this, I'll use my old large brush again. Right. I'm going to liberally apply this to the whole model. I like the Citadel washes, but I still watered down my mix quite a bit, as they can leave blotchy stains which don't look too good. There we go, just cover the whole model. Now we will do a little highlighting, 
with some golden yellow. If you're not sure what highlighting is, it is where you paint the uppermost parts of the model with a lighter tone. This technique is effectively the opposite of a wash. A wash goes into the recesses and creates shadows, whereas a highlight picks out the higher details and lights them up. You've got to think of it in terms of the model's surroundings. The sunlight will be shining down on the marine, and as light moves in straight lines, it will hit the raised areas first and leave any parts that it can't get to in the dark. As you can see, I've done the left shoulder pad, the right shoulder pad trim, the right knee pad, the edges of the chest plate, and the very top of his helmet. I'm now going to do the backpack. Here's the pot I forgot to show you before, golden yellow. And now we will carry this on with blood red for the red bits. I'll start with the melter gun casing, keeping the paint nice and liquid, not only to maintain a good flow, but also to blend it in with the base coat. I'll do the back as well, and the left knee pad, and also the right shoulder pad, avoiding that skull in the middle there. Next I will use some Codex Grey and we will do a bit of dry brushing. And for this technique I will use my Army Painter Wargamer Small Dry Brush. The dry brushing method is really quite literal, so make sure when doing this to wipe off almost all the paint so that the brush is pretty dry. I will go ahead and dry brush the base and the Marine's feet to represent the dustiness of the battlefield and we move from dust to rust. Using dark flesh again, I will show you how to do some stippling with my Citadel Medium Dry Brush. This technique is very similar to dry brushing, however you don't just paint it on, you use a quick dabbing motion like so. This creates a nice looking rust effect, and if you keep dabbing in random places, you'll end up with a more natural looking result. I will use this method for all of the armor pieces, including the red and the tin bits. This next step is a speedy one. It's a whole model wash, this time of Devlin mud. As with my special wash mix that I used before, I've watered this down to prevent it from staining too much. I'll move back to my Wargamer detail brush now, as I was using my Citadel large brush for that previous step, and I'll take red gore. I will be using this to paint on some blood splatters <laughs> at the bottom of the decapitated head here, around the head and onto the tentacle, and across his face a bit, and then the gash in the helmet on the base. And the final step to finish off the model is to use a dash of bow red. This is more heavily watered down and will just be applied to the splats that I painted in the last step to make the blood look more fluid and realistic. Almost there. <laughs> and there it is, the finished article. Now I could have spent more time on this, but as the model will be used for gaming, it should look fine on the tabletop. This is my painting tutorial for a Renegade Lamenter Assault Marine. Hope you like it.